a for the so-called Christian world. They celebrate this day to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. Although the Bible does not say when exactly Jesus was born, but from evidences that we find in the Gospels, we know that it was not on December 25th. This day was observed by the pagans as a day of festivity commemorating the birth of Baal. And when uh, Constantine Caesar was converted or supposedly converted to Christianity, he introduced this day also as a day of festivity in the Christian world. And today, many people, they have meetings with their families, the commercial people, they do good business at this time, and where, whatever the reason is, the whole world speak about Jesus Christ these days. Even those who do not believe in him as the Savior, as God, as one that incarnated, left the ivory palaces and came to this world to save that which was lost. So, Jesus is spoken of today in all circles, in business, in the Christian home, and even among those who do not believe in Jesus, they still speak of him. And it happens that this day, this Sabbath day, today is the last Sabbath of this year, 2004. We also celebrate this Sabbath, not as the Christian world celebrate Christmas Day, but we celebrate the Sabbath as a memorial of God's creation. And as we studied in the Sabbath school lesson, Jesus Christ also rested after he finished the work of redemption on the seventh day, on the Sabbath. In the commercial world, in the end of the year, generally they take stocks. There is a day of stock taking. And they make an analysis of what they have gained, whether they have had profit or loss. We, as Christians, should all also have a stock-taking now in the end of the year. I wish that we may consider one chapter of the Bible. Shall we open our Bibles and let us read? It's not a long chapter. There's only 17 verses. That's Psalm 90. Let us read this Bible verse. And after that, we will consider some parts of this psalm. Psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place 
in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest men to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed in thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knows the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of of our hands establish thou it. It is considered that this psalm was written by Moses and entered in the book of Psalms. When the Lord appeared to Moses in the wilderness, he appeared with the title, I am that I am. And that means simply Jehovah. And the meaning of it means was, is, and will be. In other words, the eternal one. And here in this psalm is written that before mountains existed, before the earth was formed, from everlasting to everlasting, he is the same. And it says, one thousand years to God is just the same as one day. Or even as three hours of a day. It's the watch of the night. We count the time 
by seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, etc. But God does not count time. In countless ages, he is the same. He did not say, I was, I am and I will be. He says, I am. He always is. And he de does not depend on time. For him, a little time, a short time, or eternity is the same. But for us is different. We count time. And now we are just coming to the end. One more week and we come to the end of another year. When we look back the New Year's Day of 2004, it appears that just is behind in the corner. But now 365 days will end soon. And the psalmist here, it says, that our days are passed away and sp spend our years as a tale that is told. As a tale. It's there, and after, it's finished. It's gone. It's gone to eternity. It will never come back. I want to read a little statement from the Spirit of Prophecy from the Review and Herald, December 23, 1902. So this was written how many years ago? 1902. Now it's 2004. And just two days difference, because today is 25, and this was written 23rd. Listen what the servant of the Lord has written. Another year has almost passed into eternity. A few more days, and we shall enter a new year. My brethren and sisters, employ wisely the remaining hours of the old year. We still have a few days, a few hours. And the counsel given is, employ wisely these remaining days. If you have in any wise neglected your duty, repent before God and return to the path from which you have wandered. Remember how brief the period of life allotted you. You know not how soon your probation may close. Say not presumptuously, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. God may have different plans for you. Life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes. You 
know not how soon your hand may lose its cunning, your steps its firmness. There is peril in a moment's delay. This was written December 23, 1902. A few more days, and this year will pass into eternity. Never come back again. If we have neglected some of our duties before God and before our brethren, before our families, before the church, the counsel is repent before God and return from the path from which you have wandered. Signs of the Times, January 1, 1885. The old year this was written on the New, D New Year's Day and making a reference to the year that just passed, servant of the Lord says, the old year with its 366 days. This was written in 1885 and that year was a leap, leap year. <laughs> with 366 days of privilege and duty has passed into eternity. And each day a record has been made in the books of heaven. Our individual characters are as distinctly and faithfully represented there as are the features of the face on the polished plate of the artist. The Lord never mistakes in his estimate of our acts and motives. Our lives stand revealed before the angels in their true light. If the character is unlovely, and debased, if the disposition is harsh, overbearing, and passionate, these traits will exclude their possessor from heaven. All our acts with the motives that prompt, prompted them are weighed in the balances of the sanctuary, and the decisions rendered are just and equal. The Lord does not excuse in one what he condemns in another. Dear reader, examine your own heart and life in the light of God's word. And ask yourself, what has my record been for the year that is just closing? What advancement have I made in the Christian life? What victories have I gained? And what have I done to help others and lead them to Christ? Whether we make an analysis of our lives or not on earth, it is done in the heavenly sanctuary. The analysis of our lives is going on. Our acts, motives are weighed in the balances 
of the sanctuary. And the questions the Spirit of Prophecy asks, what have what is my record been? What have I done during this year that will please God? Did I advance in the Christian experience? Am I a better Christian today than in the beginning of the year? Am I a better husband? Are you a better wife? Children, are you more obedient now than you have been in the beginning of the year? Parents, are you more earnest in bringing up your children according to the will of God. Review and Herald, January 28 in 85. It says, many of you have made great mistakes the last year. Will you repeat these mistakes during the year upon which you have just entered? Human judgment is finite, and men in their blind self-will often trust to their own opinion and take a course that cuts directly across the path of God's providence and defeats His ends. You need to examine yourself carefully to see what is the tendency of your course. The Spirit of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, and it will reveal to you your standing and the nature of your work. Our lives here on earth is just like a grass or a flower that in the morning is beautiful and in the afternoon it is withered. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 to 8, we read, Isaiah 40, 6 to 8. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the godliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Cry, cry aloud. And the prophet asked, what? What shall I cry? What shall I say to the people? So, you shall say, all flesh is grass. All people is grass. Today is green, but tomorrow may be dry. Today is beautiful. Tomorrow may not be. First Peter one twenty five four repeats. First Peter one twenty four says, For all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof 
falleth away. I just remember that not long ago, Brother Burek and myself and Brother Baumak, we were in Costa Rica. We visited our brother in his home. He took us with his car. And we went to do a visit and studied Sabbath afternoon. And now when I returned from Brazil, I just heard the sad news that this brother Uh, came here to the United States. He is a U.S. citizen. And he wanted to make a little bit more money than what happened to him. He had an accident with a truck, and his two legs were amputated, both of them. The brother from that used to live in North Carolina. And he still in a state of coma, in intensive care. One day, we are here, today we are here, we are strong and healthy, but what will happen tomorrow, we don't know. Amen. And the the Bible tells us clearly that all flesh is like a grass. And if you ask uh, James, he will tell us in James chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And James says that instead of saying, we will do this, we will do that, what word should we add? Verse 15. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Our lives, the, uh, James says, is like a vapor, like a steam. You can see it, but soon disappears, and there is no more. So is our life. When we make plans, and we should make plans, Yes, we should not remain idle. But to all our plans, we should add what? If the Lord will. If it is God's will, then we will do this, we will do that. And we should never leave God outside of our plans, of our projects. <laughs> And our years run. I remember in 1960 when I entered in Bible work as a Bible worker, I went to visit a family. And there was a little boy, five years old. Now, that five years old boy is a man of a gray hair is a minister which is still active but soon will retire and I was talking to him 
I said, do you remember when I visited you for the first time in 1960? He said, no, I was only five years old. And when I saw him now, gray hair, brother, the, some of the brethren know him, brother Anisezio. He has already nearly ending his ministry. Soon he will retire. And when I see that, I say, how time flew away. Passed like a tale that is told. Many things happened since, but time that is gone never come back again. The Faith I Live By, page 158, it says, The value of time is beyond computation. Christ regarded every moment as precious, and it is thus that we should regard it. Every moment is precious. Life is too short to be trifled away. We have but a few days of probation in which to prepare for eternity. We have no time to waste, no time to devote to selfish pleasure, no time for indulgence in sin. It is now that we are to form characters for the future immortal life. It is now that we are to prepare for the searching judgment. We call ourselves Adventists because we await for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it appears sometimes that the doctrine of the second coming of Christ is also like a tale. Our grandfathers, our fathers, they were all talking about the coming of Christ. The evil servant, in his heart, he says, My Lord delayeth his coming. He will not come soon. In the book, In Heavenly Places, page 355, I read this. If I knew that Christ were coming in a few years, one says, I should live very differently. If I knew that Christ will come next year, then I will live differently. And here is the answer of the servant of the Lord. But if we believe that he is coming at all, we should live just as faithfully as if we knew that he would appear in a few years if we believe that he is coming, and if we would know that he is coming next year, beginning next year, if we would know, perhaps we would live differently. But the servant of, law, or the, of the Lord says, it makes no difference. If you believe that he is coming, whether next year or the year after or in a few years, we should live just as faithfully as if he would come now. We cannot see the end from the beginning, but Christ has provided sufficient help for every day in the year. All we have to do with is this only day. 
We should think about what we should do today. Today we must be faithful to our trust. Today, today we must love God with all the heart and our neighbor as ourselves. Today we must resist the temptations of the enemy and through the grace of Christ gain the victory. Thus, we shall watch and wait for Christ's coming. Each day we should live as if we knew that this would be our last day on this earth. If we knew that Christ would come tomorrow, would we not crowd into today all the kind words and the unselfish deeds that we could? Soon the new year will begin. And what is the general greetings of the people? Happy New Year. Again, I want to read this comment from Review and Herald, December 23. It says, How often your lips utter the kind, kindly greetings. I wish you a Happy New Year. And then... In a few moments, speak impatiently, fretful words. How many children are always ready to dispute about trifles, <coughs> unwilling to make the smallest sacrifice for others? To such, the new year will bring no real happiness. They may indulge in boisterous mirth, but their hearts know no peace or joy. Will you not come to Jesus with penitence and humility, that he may cleanse you from sin and prepare you for his kingdom? As you do this, you will have the happiest year that you have ever known. It will bring joy in heaven and joy on earth. We have still more one week until this year goes into eternity. And what shall we do? If we come to Jesus and ask Him to cleanse us from our sin, all our sins, then we may be able to wish to others a happy new year. And for us, this year, what had passed, we can never bring it back. But this year, will close as the happiest year of our lives if we feel that we are at peace with God and He accepts us. It will bring joy in heaven and bring joy to us, those who will have this experience. May the Lord help us and bless us that we may make an examination and before the end of the year closes, we may have peace with God and we may feel that we are accepted by Him. This is my wish and prayer. Amen. Amen.